I think everybody knows who I am. I'm Jeff Mills. Uh, give you a real brief background. I spent five, five fire seasons uh, in the Los Padres National Forest. Uh, the last two years, I led a, led a crew, a tanker crew of six. Part of my responsibility was to train the crew members. So I'm pretty well versed in uh, the knowledge about the basic fire tools. Uh, at Train Mountain, we have three basic pieces of fire fighting equipment. Uh, a full fire crew would have a, a few more, but they're the real basic tools. The first tool I want to talk about is the Pulaski. This tool was invented by a fellow named Ed Pulaski. He was one of the first U.S. Forest Rangers. And he's also famous for uh, the big fire in Idaho in the 19, early 1900s. And if you're interested, just Google Ed Pulaski. But he's the one that invented this tool. It's a multi-purpose tool. It has a axe head and an azd or a matic combined in one tool. Previous to this tool, the crew either had to have one person operating a mattock and one person operating an axe, or they had to carry two tools. Carrying two tools is real cumbersome. This tool is for chopping. With this tool, when properly used, you can usually cut through a, about a two inch branch with one to two, two swings. You want to cut at a 45 degree angle to the grain of the wood. If you cut straight on, it'll just bounce off. The, the mattock end is for digging roots out. Uh, if you're in building fire line, which we probably won't get involved with, it's also used for trenching. This tool is carried like this and on the downhill side of a slope. So if you were to fall, you can let it go and it'll fall away from you. Another feature that we've put on all the fire tools is we put a red stripe on them. That indicates that that, ha that tool has to be, that is for fire and has to be ready to use. If you find any tools that are not in ready to use condition, I let me know or another of uh, the board members know so that we can get it reconditioned and back, put it back into ready for fire service. When you're working uh, with other people, you want to be minimum of 10 feet apart. That's roughly three large paces. Uh, because when you're swinging, you can see if you swing, swing this overhead, if somebody is a couple feet away, you can hit them. This tool is very sharp and it will cause serious injury. The next tool we're going to talk about is referred to as an LHRP. That sounds confusing. It's a long handled round point shovel. Uh, the Forest Service has basically two types of shovels that they use. Uh, the tanker crews, because of the compartment size, they have a sh shovel that has a shorter handle. And it was always, you got to realize that it was before uh, we had women on fire crews, so we referred to them as lady shovels. This shovel is very versatile. There is a lot of things you can do with the shovel when suppressing a fire. First off, when you carry a shovel, you carry it like this with the, the tip pointed down again to the side. You never carry it on your shoulder. That's a good way to injure, injure somebody else. So again, 10 feet spacing. The shovel can do a number of things. It's a scraping tool and you could scrape grass, duff, uh, pine needles, pine cones. And the best way to do that is get a position like this and you can just go along and scrape and you can flip flip over if you kind of get like a, a clump of turf or whatever and you can just flip it over into the unburned area. 
the, the other primary uh, use of the shovel is to throw dirt. Fortunately, here at Train Mountain, we have pummy dirt. And it's probably the best dirt in the world to fight fire with because it's like a powder. It's almost like a powdered fire extinguisher. So a couple of the techniques to throw dirt would be to dig in and spread. And what you want to do is you want to go to the base of the flame. You always want to try to extinguish to the base of the flame. What you're doing is you're breaking the fire triangle. I think all of us are familiar with the fire triangle. Uh, fuel, heat, and, and um, oxygen. Those are the three. You gotta, we have to break one of those three legs of the triangle. So what we're doing with the shovel is we're, we're, we're reducing heat and we're reducing oxygen. There's more, there's more techniques if, if you have a, uh, a, what, a tree that's burning up high, you can get a shovel full of dirt and you can throw overhead. And it, it'll be, you'll be you're surprised how effective it is, especially with our pummy dirt. Now then, the Pulaski and the shovel will complement each other. Because if there's two people, even if, there's, even if you're by yourself, you can use the Pulaski to break up the soil, to uh, make a stockpile of dirt to throw. Another uh, couple pointers on, on a fire. The black area is your safety zone. So that's area that's been burned over. Also, always try to keep the wind to your back as much as possible because that the fire is going to spread with the wind direction and so you fight the fire from behind the flames not in front of the flames now the last piece of equipment that we have is the backpack pump the backpack pump has shoulder straps it has a bracket for the pump which is referred to as a trombone. The pump has uh, two nozzles on, on. The yellow ones have two nozzles on. I don't remember about the red ones that we have out there. Um, one nozzle is a spray nozzle, one nozzle is a straight stream. The um, nozzles unscrew to, cha to change out. And I just change it to the spray nozzle. Okay, that's the spray. And I could probably hit Steve over there if you want to get wet. <laughs> Can we take turns? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll go away from the audience. One unit of water will put out 300 units of fire. So that's something to keep in mind. A little bit of water goes a long ways. I've actually, I actually came onto a fire once. Uh, I wasn't on a fire crew at the time, but it was, it was a, lo a local fire truck showed up and it was a grass fire. And by the time the guy had the pump engaged, I had the fire, I, I saw the guy that was driving the truck didn't know how to put the pump into gear. And by the time I saw that it had a backpack pump on the truck, and I grabbed the backpack pump and I had the fire out. And it was probably about the size of this yard. So it, these are very effective. The other features on these are In the lid, there is a strainer. The strainer uh, doesn't need to be used if you're filling it out of a faucet or a water hose bib, because that water is usually pretty pure. But if, you, if you're filling it out of a pond or a creek or something, you should always put the use the strainer. Now I need a... Uh, volunteer here. 
Okay, Kirk. You get to wear it? You get to wear it. <laughs> okay, now then, if there's two people, the way to, the way to dawn on one of these packs is to have the one person pick it up. Let's make sure we got the straps are straight. One person to pick it up. And that's how you put it on. Okay, on some of these there's a hook. There's a, well this one doesn't have the clip. Some of them have a clip where you can clip the, the pump on up front. When, when you have a backpack pump on, you never should climb up on something or jump off of something. Like climb up on a log and then jump off of a log. You should also be aware that your balance point is very different. Um, we only fill these with four gallons of water so that we can actually handle them a little bit better. They will hold five. But your, your point of balance is, is different than when you're, you're unencumbered. Now, uh, if you're alone, there, there's two options. One option is there is a handle on it and you can move around that way. Or if you can set it up on something like the back of a gator or something like that and don it. Okay, I'll help Kirk remove it. You take that off first so you can handle it. Okay, and I'll take a relieve the pressure and set it down. Okay, uh, any questions? Yes, Deborah. Jeff, when um, you're putting fire out with the water, right. do you point it at the ground, at the bottom, or at the top? You always point it to the base of the flames, even with the water. Even with the water. That is the, the, and even with fire extinguishers, powder type, CO2, you always go to the base of the flames. Ryan. When you're clearing the ground, do you always throw it onto the burn side or unburn side? That's a very good question. If the material is burning or close to burning, you know, like if you're in grass and, and, and you're right on the edge of the, the burning and the, and the unburnt material, you always throw it into the, un, to the burned area. Remember, the burned area is your safety zone. So if anything goes wrong, always go into the burned area. Go, go to black. The, 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 uh, say, one of the sayings we used to use was the black is, black is safe. And that is uh, one of the critical things. As property owners, we are required, if we discover a fire, we're required to make an effort to um, extinguish the fire. If we have a fire, and the, one of the first things we should do is call the fire department, but and then att try to attack it. If we find a fire that's burning the whole hillside, we need to call the fire department and evacuate. Uh, our effectiveness is going to be on a small, smaller fire, uh, depending on the fuel, like this area or. If it's in heavy fuel, maybe something the size of a pickup. Those are fires that we should be able to get out. And again, it's going to depend on the wind, the temperature, and the, and how dry the fuel is. Right now, the fuel is very dry, and uh, we, we are looking at two types of fire danger ratings. We have what they call the adjective fire danger, which is low, medium, high, extreme. Those fire dangers relate to the condition of the fuel, the humidity, the wind, the temperature. And so we're extreme, so that means we have low humidity, low fuel moisture, and high, high temperatures and possible windy conditions. The IFPL, industrial fire precaution level, tells us what we can do or can't do. We're at level three, which is hoot, what they refer to as hoot owl, which when we talk in the morning meeting is uh, powered equipment up to, one, up, up to 1 p.m. 
and then 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. we're shut down. When you shut down, it requires a one-hour fire watch after you shut down. If we go to extreme four, everything shuts down. So any other questions? Yes, Alan. Uh, there are other jugs in a fire car? Yeah, we, we try to put uh, one or two more water jugs in the fire car to uh, have a replenishment supply of water handy. Not for drinking, though. Not for drinking. I would not recommend to drink this water. It's probably been in these jugs. Well, we use the same jugs over every year, so some of these jugs have been out here four or five years, and so who knows what's in it. Okay, any other questions? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank thank you, Jeff. Jeff. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs>